there, and welcome to another Unity tutorial. So it's been a little while since the last upload. I've just finished uh, university for the trimester. So I've got a little bit more time over the next few weeks to actually, you know, create a few videos and hopefully finish off this series and get started on the, uh, on the next one. So this is kind of a continuation on from the last one where we did lighting in the last video. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to add some post-processing effects just to make things look even nicer. So before we start this, you need to make sure you've got the post-processing effects installed. I, I don't know if it actually comes uh, installed by default with the more recent versions of Unity. It might, but uh, it doesn't hurt to check. So you need to go to Window and then Package Manager. And currently we're viewing the packages that I have installed in the project. So uh, to view all of the available packages, we go up to this drop-down menu here and we select Unity Registry. And um, yeah, you can see there's post-processing there. It's all in alphabetical order. So yeah, just scroll down until you see post-processing. Uh, and then if it says download here, download it and then install it. And that will give you access to all of the post-processing components. So once you have that, uh, the first thing that we'll need to do is set up our camera. Okay, so I want our post-processing effects to apply to our main camera here. So um, I'm going to select my main camera from the hierarchy underneath the player, go to add component, and then I'm just going to type in post and here we go. Uh, we've got three post processing components and the one we want to add to the camera is the layer. Here it is here. Now um, we need to do a couple of things. So it says no layer has been set. The trigger will never be affected by volumes. So yeah, we need to set up a layer specifically for our post-processing here. So um, let's go up to the main camera and I'm just gonna drop down and click add layer. We're not actually gonna change the main camera. We're just adding a new layer here. And let's call this post-processing, just like that, okay? So uh, I'll select my main camera again here and scroll down. And now we'll change the layer uh, variable here to post-processing and uh, yeah that's all we need to do for this um, we can leave everything else as default if you want anti-aliasing here are your anti-aliasing settings right there uh, and you know all this stuff is also toggleable through code I'm not going to show you how to do that today I'm just going to show you how to set everything up okay so the next thing that we need to do is create an empty object to attach our global post-processing settings uh, to so I'm going to come to the hierarchy I'm going to right click and just select create empty and let's call this post processing and you know I'll just add global on the end there and uh, we need to do two things the first thing we need to do it doesn't matter where this is um, we need to reset the transform so I'm going to right click on the transform component and click reset uh, and then we need to change the layer so um, for the layer I'm going to select post processing so with our empty object set up, um, we can add the post-processing volume component to this object. Now, um, we're gonna do a couple of things here. We are going to turn is global on, right? And what that means is this is uh, going to apply to the like entire game. It's going to apply to um, everything in the scene. And the next thing we need to do is create a post-processing profile. So uh, there's two ways to do this. We can do it directly on our volume component here. So we can just click new. Uh, the other way would be to right click, you know, somewhere in our project window, go to create, and then you can, there it is, post processing profile right there. And either way, it's gonna create a, a file in your project window. And let's just call this like global post processing profile. Okay, excellent. So we can add effects to it like here, uh, but what we'll do is I'm just gonna select the component and we are going to drop it into the profile variable um, of the volume. And then we can set effects here too. Okay, so let's add some effects. There are five effects that I wanna add and we'll add them in alphabetical order just cause that's how they're listed. So I'm gonna click on add effect and go to Unity, 
So you, you can actually add custom effects, um, but these are all of the default uh, post-processing effects included in the package. Um, so yeah, the first that we'll start with is ambient occlusion. So what ambient occlusion will do, if I just reposition my camera slightly, uh, it will darken uh, the edges of the geometry, right, where all of the uh, shadows will fall. So uh, for this, I'm gonna turn on mode and intensity. Um, first, I'll change the mode to scalable ambient obscurance. Uh, and for the intensity, I'm just gonna set this to one. Uh, and I'm also gonna change the radius here. And I'll, I'll set this to 0.3. All right, now just to like give you an extreme example uh, of what ambient occlusion is, should have done this first, but yeah, if I turn it up, you can see sort of the shadows around here are being emphasized. They're also being a bit more subtly emphasized around um, the inside of the geometry for our room. If I change it back to multi-scale, you can see it's like well overboard. You can see how it works a bit better. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to leave my ambient ambient occlusion as if we want to see what the scene looks like without it because it affects the scene view as well as the game view so if we want to see what it looks like without it we can obviously turn off the post-processing uh, game object which will disable the post-processing effects uh, or if we want to turn off an individual effect like this one um, we just turn this checkbox on and off right okay cool so the next effect that we're going to add is bloom so i'm going to go add effect unity and bloom okay so for this one we're going to turn on the intensity the threshold soft knee and diffusion uh, so the intensity obviously controls how intense the bloom is so it, it quickly gets very very intense uh, i'm going to set mine to 0.76 because i actually find a really subtle effect is um you know much more impactful uh, the threshold, I'm going to reduce it slightly, so we'll say 0.85, so it can't quite get uh, as bright. The soft knee, this kind of affects the fall off. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to see with our settings, but I'm going to set this to 0.31. Uh, and the diffusion also affects the fall off, so as we increase the diffusion, it uh, increases like the light I guess coming from it uh, and if we reduce it it reduces it so I'm actually gonna set this to like 5.5 right so without bloom that's what it looks like so even though each setting was quite subtle um, when you turn the bloom off it's you know noticeable when it's not there and when we turn it on um, yeah it's just a little bit more emphasized blooms everyone's favorite effects um, yeah you can easily go overboard on Bloom, so just watch out there. Um, now, one sort of issue with Bloom uh, is it becomes kind of like, you know, whitewashed. Um, we could, you know, change the actual color, uh, but I'm actually gonna just add some color grading. So next we'll go Add Effect and then Unity, and we'll select Color Grading. So here is our color grading settings. First, uh, let's change the mode, right? Because we haven't got a HDR project. So I'm gonna change the mode to low definition range. Then we'll play with the temperature. So we can make a, a cooler scene by giving a lower value, which you know emphasizes the blue and gives it kind of a, a blue wash. And if we go the other way, um, it's an orange tint, right? So I'm gonna set this to just 10 to give it a very slight orange tint. Uh, and the next three values I'll play with are the saturation, brightness, and contrast. Again, really slight, subtle adjustments here. So I'm gonna set the saturation to two. I'm gonna set the brightness to one. And I'm gonna set the contrast to three. Um, and again, if we turn it off, you can see there's just a very, very slight difference in how um, particularly here in the light in the game view you can notice it uh, but yeah in in how the color uh, is emphasized right um, so these are sort of getting in the way so let's just minimize these three effects all right so next we will add uh, depth of field 
let's add some depth of field. And we're gonna change the first three properties here, the focus distance, the aperture, and the focal length. Um, so these two properties here, the aperture uh, and the focal length, uh, you know, create a, a larger or a more, more shallow depth of field. And the focus distance defines, you know, how far away the zone of focus or the point of focus is, right? Uh, so here, I'm actually going to reduce this. So let's set it to 6.5, right? And I'll demonstrate how to identify this in the scene a bit easier in just a second. Let's change these other properties first. So this, uh, so aperture, uh, we're going to set that to 4.2, right? Uh, and then the focal length will set to 55. So if I increase or de decrease the focal distance, you can see that if I make it really low, um, things start to get blurrier a lot closer. And if we increase it, we can see things you know, in the distance quite clearly. Um, the zone of focus though, oh sorry, the focus distance also impacts you know, how blurry things are that are like really close to you as well. So you need to keep that in mind as you're changing those settings. So again, if I turn depth of field off, eh, there's not really a difference. But if we were to be playing the game uh, and disable and enable that, uh, it would be a lot more obvious. Um, or if we had the, the screen maximized and the UI turned off, for instance. Okay, so uh, that is nearly everything. We are gonna add one more effect, which will be the Vignet effect. So this effect is gonna darken the edges uh, of our screen, of our, of our game view, um, which sort of just helps the player focus on, you know, what's important in the middle. Uh, so for this, we're just gonna turn on the intensity uh, and the smoothness. Actually, no, we'll, we'll turn the smoothness off. That's gonna, we'll leave that and make that the same. But the intensity, I'm gonna set this to 0 0.35 and you can see it's darkened uh, the edges of our game view a bit uh, and our scene view as well. Again, if I turn it off, you can see it becomes much more lighter around the edges and that's it turned on. Uh, and again, if we were to like really increase it, you can see how uh, intense it can get. Okay, excellent. So now let's hit play and see what everything looks like with those post-processing effects turned on. Cool. So I think everything pops a little bit more. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, I think the last thing that we can do to really improve things is add some fog uh, to our scene. So to do this, we need to go to the lighting panel um, which you can find under the window menu, rendering, and then lighting. Uh, and we need to go to the environment tab here. And at the bottom, underneath other settings, you'll see a checkbox for fog. So we'll turn that on. Uh, and you can see that that adds a little bit of fog. So if we increase the density, it makes the fog more or less intense. It's really sensitive as well. Um, and there's yeah a few modes we can use here. There's the exponential modes uh, and there's the linear mode, which is the one that I prefer. So here we have a bit more control over where the fog actually begins and ends. So we have a little bit more control and can fine tune uh, how the fog dissipates. So I'm gonna set the end point to 30. Uh, and if I just increase the start point, you'll see that as I increase it, slowly starts to get stronger and stronger because the uh, starting point gets closer to the end point, right? So we can control, um, yeah, how thick the fog is uh, from a distance. So yeah, I'm gonna set the start to 10 and the end to 30. And the last thing we'll do here is we'll just change the color to match the scene a bit more. Um, we can even use the eyedropper for this. So let's pick like one of these sort of slightly darker lava pixels, maybe like a dark orange. That's probably not our color, but we can work from there. Um, 
let's right, maybe something a little bit brighter. Something like that. Maybe we can even just increase the start point a bit. Uh, and maybe the end point slightly as well. Um, we should actually turn off I just select our canvas, just disable our canvas to get a good look at things. That's not bad, we're getting the, the fog starting to fade in there a little bit. So um, maybe we can even increase this to like 18, 20, and then reduce that to 30. Uh, let's make it 40. I don't know, that might be a bit too far. 35 and 15. I might keep it at those values. But yeah, um, so if we turn our canvas back on, and let's just play the game one last time. Okay. Alright, so this is the uh, end product in terms of the uh, post-processing and fog. Um, obviously there's a couple of things that could be improved. These uh, transparent materials aren't being lit very well, so um, we could replace them with some lights maybe. Uh, and, you know, some of these objects, like this moving platform, because it's not static, it's not picking up the light um, from the emission of the lava, and we could fix that by placing light probes around the scene. Uh, so maybe that'll be one uh, for, you know, one of the next videos. But anyway, that's it for this video. If you liked the video and you found it helpful, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more game development tutorials like this, then I'd then I'd encourage you to consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.